Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a factorial equation. We have n minus 1 factorial plus 1 equals n squared. And we're going to be solving for n values. Are there any solutions? What do you think? Let's find out. So we have a factorial on the left hand side plus 1 and then we have a polynomial on the right hand side. So this is a pretty non-standard equation. Factorial equations are not very easy to solve sometimes. You kind of have to look at some boundaries, you know, upper bounds, lower bounds, things like that, and use a little bit of number theory here and there. So here's what we're going to do first. Subtract 1 from both sides. And the reason behind that is to get something factorable. If I subtract 1 from n squared, I get what is called a difference of 2 squares. And guess what? Difference of 2 squares is factorable. What's the formula? If you remember, a squared minus b squared can be written as a plus b times a minus b. So we're going to proceed with that. But before that, I want to show you if there are any solutions given by Wolfram Alpha. Obviously, <laughs> you'll get it when I show you. So here's the graph of n minus 1 factorial plus 1, which is, by, by the way, graphed because we can define factorial for real numbers that are not integers by using gamma function, you know, an integral. And obviously, we don't have the value for negative integers because it's basically undefined at those points, right? You see the asymptotes? So it kind of looks like uh, parabolas, but they're not parabolas. One thing that's interesting is, though, we do see two intersection points in this graph. Can you guess what they are? One of them looks like negative 3. The other one is kind of between 1 and 2. Obviously, that's not what we're looking for, but I just wanted to show you. This is really cool. If you are looking for real solutions, obviously, you're not going to find them algebraically, but you can kind of uh, as, at least look at them visually. And these are the numerical values. Obviously, they're going to be approximations, and this is what they are. One of them is pretty close to negative 3, but unfortunately, negative 3 factorial does not exist. Okay? Cool. Let's uh, proceed with what we have uh, here, which is n minus 1 factorial. I'm going to pick it up from there. n minus 1 factorial equals n squared minus 1. So what was I saying? I was saying that this is called difference of two squares, and we can factor it. So let's go ahead and do it. Factor n squared minus 1 into n minus 1 times n plus 1. Normally, I would write the n plus 1 first, but why did I write n minus 1 first? Because there's n minus 1 factorial on the left, and we're going to expand it. Now, you can't always expand n minus 1 factorial. For example, if n is 1, then you get 0 factorial. 0 factorial is 1, and that's it. You can write it in terms of negative 1 factorial, because negative 1 factorial does not even exist. Make sense? So, but n is probably greater than 1, and you'll see in a little bit what that looks like. So let's go ahead and expand n minus 1 factorial and write it as n minus 1 multiplied by n minus 2 factorial. Remember factorials, like for example, if I have 10 factorial, I can write it as 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. But I can also stop at any point, let's say, the rest of this expression is 9 factorial, so I can also write the 10 factorial as 10 times 9 factorial. That's what's really nice about factorials. At any point, you can stop and put the exclamation mark, which obviously is not for just emphasis, but for factorial. So let's go ahead and set it equal to n minus 1 times n plus 1. And why did we stop at n minus 2 factorial? Because that gave us n minus 1 as a factor, which is what we need. Now, at this point, you might be thinking, can I just cancel out n minus 1? Yes and no. You kind of need to check. Can n minus 1 be 0? In other words, can n equal 1? And the answer is no. If you check with the original problem, if you remember, the original equation was like this. And if you replace n with 1, you're going to get 0 factorial plus 1 equals 1. But that's false because 0 factorial is 1, and 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. So n equals 1 is not a solution. Therefore, you can easily get rid of n minus 1. And you're going to end up with this, which is a little simpler 
Now let's go ahead and write it down. n minus 2 factorial equals n plus 1. Okay, we know that n is greater than 1, so it's probably greater than or equal to 2 in this case. And we're going to do something interesting. You don't have to do it that way. I'll show you the alternative. But one of the ways you can handle these things, which is something that I really like, is substitution, because substitution is awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and call this k minus 1 or n minus 2. I'm going to call this k. In other words, n equals k plus 2. If you plug it in here, you get k plus 3. So from here, we get k factorial equals k plus 3. Now, getting k factorial on the left is a really good thing, huge improvement, because we're about to divide both sides by something. But before that, let's go ahead and expand k factorial and write it as k times k minus 1 factorial. Again, for the same reason, remember we talked about it. You can expand and just stop at any point. We stopped at this point because we're about to divide by k. And again, the reasoning behind that is the presence of this k here. And now k cancels out. k minus 1 factorial equals. Now I'm going to go ahead and split this up. I'm going to write it as k over k plus 3 over k. And as you know, k over k is equal to 1, and 3 over k is 3 over k. Now, what is so good about this equation? I know I made a big deal, but I think it's a big deal. Now, notice that on the right-hand side, we have 3 divided by k. If k minus 1 is greater than or equal to 0, right? Hopefully, it's greater than something else. But anyways, it means the left-hand side is an integer, right? This is an integer which means the right-hand side is also an integer. But we already know that 1 is an integer, so 3 over k must be an integer. This is what's really cool, beautiful, awesome, amazing about number theory. It gives us the divisibility criteria, and it's just awesome. So this means that 3 over k is an integer. In other words, k is a factor of 3. What can k be, though? I mean, there's only like uh, so many values that you can pick. k must be 1 or 3. Obviously, you're not looking for a negative k because that would make the factorial thing undefined. So k equals 1 or k equals 3. We're going to go ahead and test it out, right? If k is equal to 1, then we get 0 factorial equals 1 plus 3 over 1. This is definitely false because 1 plus 3 is 4. 4 is not equal to 0 factorial. But what uh, if k is equal to 3? Then we get 2 factorial equals 1 plus 3 over 3. 3 over 3 is 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. 2 factorial equals 2. Yay! We have a match. We have a solution. But wait a minute. We're not looking for k. We're looking for n. But n minus 2 equals k. So that means n is equal to 5. Uh-oh. Now, you didn't have to do it this way. You could also, you could also do this. When you got to this point, Okay, we don't have to do it that way. Let's just go ahead and wait a minute. Did we get to this point? Yeah, this is where we use the k, right? So here's what I can do. This is kind of like a nice hocus pocus, by the way. I really like it. I'm just going to write the n plus 1 as n minus 2 plus 3, and then divide both sides by n minus 2, and that'll do the same trick, but this time you're going to have n minus 3 factorial equals 1 plus 3 over n minus 2. n minus 2 must be a factor of 3. In other words, it needs to be 1 or 3. 1 doesn't work, 3 works, which means n is equal to 5. And now we can go ahead and check our work, actually. If you remember the original equation, I've written it so many times, right? If n is equal to 5, 4 factorial plus 1 is 25, and that's actually 5 squared, which means we have a match. Houston, we have a solution. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video, maybe on another channel like A plus B I. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.